Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make a detailed video about goldfish developmental evolutionary biology. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evo depot. Continuing from the previous episode, this time we will discuss food organisms. I will explain how to hatch Artemia and feed them to goldfish. This organism known as Artemia or brine shrimp is scientifically named Artemia salina. Therefore, it called Artemia. These Artemia are crustaceans that inhabit hypersaline lakes and saltwater lakes. Compared to the previous paramecium, Artemia is highly nutritious as a food organism and is ideal for the growth of hatching larvae. However, they cannot survive long in fresh water. Moreover, in our aquarium tank system, we cannot sustain Artemia for extended periods. Unlike paramecium, we have to buy Artemia eggs from the store each time and hatch them for use. Therefore, unlike with paramecium, we handle them with some care. First, I will briefly explain the sequence of steps. We use this kind of Artemia hatching gel to hatch Artemia. We fill this container with seawater. Then we add one to four spoonfuls of Artemia eggs, cover it and aerate vigorously to mix the seawater. These Artemia eggs do not hatch well if they stick together, so we aerate vigorously to keep the seawater well mixed. We prepare multiple one liter scale hatching gel for Artemia. We set Artemia eggs in one hatcher each day so that we always have a fresh newly hatched Artemia. After two days, when the egg have sufficiently hatched, we stop the aeration. We then cover the container with a light shielding box. This causes the hatched Artemia to swim and gather at the bottom. Once many Artemia have gathered at the bottom, we transfer the Artemia and the sea water to another container. This allows us to collect the Artemia in sea water with high density, which we refer to as a concentrated Artemia sea water. If the concentration of newly hatched Artemia is high, the concentrated Artemia sea water will look like tomato juice or carrot juice. The point here is the high concentration. Let's consider for a moment why do we collect Artemia in concentrated sea water. The reason is that what we do not want to introduce too much sea water into the tank with the larvae. In a tank system with a constant flow of fresh water, a little sea water mixing in is not a significant issue. However, in a tank with small larvae that cannot resist a strong current, we cannot introduce a large flow of water. The large flow of water increases the risk of the larvae being swept away. If a large amount of seawater flows into such a tank, the salinity of environment increases significantly. So especially when feeding Artemia to small larvae, we take care to avoid introducing too much seawater into the tank. We also pay attention to the amount of Artemia we provide. Unlike Paramecium, Artemia cannot live long in fresh water. So when the larvae are large enough to easily swallow multiple Paramecium, we add a small amount of Artemia to the tank and observe. The larvae will chase the Artemia. If we are lucky, we can see the moment they shake their bodies vigorously to eat the Artemia. Even if we do not see that moment, the stomach of the goldfish that have successfully eaten the Artemia will turn orange. This will indicate whether the larvae have eaten the Artemia or not. 
Once they reach this size, we adjust the amount of artemia we provide, trying to give as much artemia as possible. We pay attention to the amount of artemia to avoid the growth of water mold as dead artemia can cause it. If we provide a little more artemia than needed, we check the bottom of the tank the next day to ensure there is no water mold. If the tank is very dirty, we use a pipette to remove the debris or change the entire tank to maintain a clean environment. Maintaining good water quality and providing the right amount of artemia helps the larvae grow day by day. As they grow larger, they eat more artemia, so we increase the amount of artemia accordingly. In the larvae stage, continuous feeding while maintaining water quality is essential for growth, so we ensure we always have fresh artemia available. Now let me explain some additional details about our tank management and food organisms. In tanks exposed to sufficient light, algae will grow. If too much algae grows, it can cause various problems for our research. So we remove algae that obstruct observation and experiment. However, based on our laboratory experience, goldfish grow better in tank with some algae left on that wall compared to tanks that are thoroughly cleaned. The exact reason is unknown. Perhaps the algae on the walls serve as a food or maybe as a microorganisms that feed on the algae become food for the goldfish. In any case, faster growth of the goldfish advances our research. So we clean the glass surface for observation and the bottom of the tank, but we intentionally leave some algae on the walls. Thus, the goldfish in our tanks grow by eating not only paramecium and artemia, but also algae and microorganisms on the tank walls. In the previous episode, I introduced paramecia, and I've also explained about artemia. So are there any other live foods that can be used as goldfish feed? There are other organisms used as food for goldfish, such as daphnia and rotifers. But in our laboratory, we mainly use paramecium and artemia because they are easy to culture in our laboratory's scale and simple to maintain in a clean condition. By feeding these two food organisms, dried food and occasionally algae and microorganisms that appear in the tanks, the larvae grow into juveniles and then adults. And after a year, the female goldfish lay eggs needed for embryological studies. The goldfish mentioned in our paper published from our laboratory were also raised on the same diet. You can refer to these papers for details on how the goldfish were raised in our laboratory. Links are provided in the description. If any of you are raising goldfish, try comparing your results. You will likely see significant differences. Since we are approaching to the end, let me introduce the next episode. Those of you who have followed this video series already know how goldfish grow. Building on that knowledge, future episodes will explain more detail the developmental stage of goldfish. We will especially explain the developmental stage table over several episodes. The developmental stage table is an important tool for understanding embryology. Understanding the developmental stage table is crucial for grasping the complexity of goldfish embryology. So don't miss the next episode where we will dive deeper into the essential tool. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.